right now. Waiting in itself actually becomes an integral part of the trial. The trial wouldn't be so bad if the wait wasn't so long. Uh, now that we have to learn the lesson to glean tonight, since God is taking his time answering our prayers, and since we've been going through the trials as long as we've been going through them, now we have to learn this lesson. If God is not working on my circumstances, if God is not working on my problem, then evidently he must be working on me. You see, it takes God more time to work on us than it does for him to work on our problems. Because problems are subject to him. Problems does not have a will or an intellect. And there is nothing within the problem itself that has the ability to rebel against God. When God calls the problem to an end, the problem comes to an end. God doesn't have a problem with the problem. God has a problem with the people that have a problem. Oh, help us in here. Say sanctified Holy Ghost feeling on our way to heaven anyhow. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, sometimes there is some stuff in our lives that God is not satisfied with. And his trouble is he's trying to work it out of us. He's working on our arrogance, working on our pride. commitment, working on our love. And he don't have a problem with the problem. Got a problem with the one with the problem. So the question is now, can we, can we allow God to work on us? And can we not think while he's working on us? Can we not give up? while he's trying to perfect us. Can we not throw in the towel while he's trying to bring us up to standard? The question is, can we allow God to work on our life? Oh, bless his name. Until he fortifies our faith and build our character to be able to handle the next test and the next level of his anointing. I found out that God cannot increase our gifts and increase the anointing in our life if he cannot increase our faith and at the same time improve our character. A whole lot of anointing in a person with no character is destructive. Somebody say amen. All of this involves waiting, waiting, waiting. I touch somebody and ask them, how long have you been waiting to come out of what you're dealing with? The problem is not an omnipotent God. The problem is humanity that has his own will. So while looking at the text in the book of James, I want you to see what I see. It's critical because the trial and the circumstances and our trouble often destabilizes our walk with God. Because whether or not you want to admit it or not, we go through a lot of things that takes a toll on us. I, I don't care how long you've been saved. When trouble really sets in, you'll be up all night long. And if you haven't got there, just keep on living. There is a trial. There is a test. There is some trouble that would take a solid, rooted, grounded, Holy Ghost feel, preacher, or lay person, and move them from the pulpit to the front, to the front of the church, and from the front of the church out of the church. If the trial does 
not stop. They will allow the test and the trial to snatch them out of the hand of God. Tell somebody, tell them, oh, there is a trial. One that will cause you to sit and think about what you're going through all night long. It's the last thing on your mind at night. You toss and turn through the night. And when you get up in the morning, it's the first thing on your mind. There is a trial that will make you stop fixing up yourself. Have you going out in the public? Won't even comb your hair. Don't even care whether or not you look decent. There is a trial. Uh, there is a level of trouble that will have you not care about things that are going on around you. Uh, that will move you from psychological oppression to physical ailments in your body. Trouble that will begin to work on your mentality. Trouble that will begin to break your health down. Tell somebody, tell them, there is a trial. There is some trouble that will work on your mentality. But God says, I will bring you through that trial. And when I get you on the other side. The devil won't be able to touch you in that area again. Again, our text says that a double-minded man is unstable. Listen now, the reason he is unstable in our text is because the trial that he's dealing with have upset his walk with God. So now to give him wisdom. I tell you that each writer keeps going back to the intellect, the mind of man, which means that God has to get into his mind. He has to get your mind, get into your mind and show you that the trial, the problem, the situation is a benefit and not really a problem. Chapter 5 and 1. 